Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Eternal Card Breakdown. Uh, we saw this one a little while ago, uh, but it is the new promo card, uh, and I forgot to put up a breakdown of it, so we're going to talk about it now. This is Enoa, the Elevator Overseer, a 4 4 for 4 in Rakano that says the first time you play an attachment each turn, you get plus 4 power this turn. So, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about this and uh, all the different things it does. There's a lot of like interesting stuff to be dealing with here. Um, but yeah, like overall, this seems like a really, really solid choice for Rakano at the moment, which is very, very nice because I think Rakano has taken a bit of a hit with that nerf to Silix. Uh, basically, they just don't have as much uh, ability to put field uh, aggressive options with like high influence costs because of the significance of the amount of depleted power that happens. So getting some like interesting options that are a little bit lighter is definitely something that I think the deck needed to or that the like meta needed to sort of improve these cards in expedition. Um, but yeah, this is Enoa. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Enoa. So Enoa is really well statted for what she's doing. She is a 4-4 four, four for 4. She's an Oni. So she's got pretty much the standard stat line you want to have like just a pretty beefy thing like uh, this sort of like 4 4 for 4 stat line is not perfectly efficient like there are plenty of like 5 5s in this sort of area that can actually be like quite a bit better um and of course there are like 5 4s and 5 3s and a lot of other things where basically you get like a little bit more bang for your buck you don't quite hit that threshold value but 4 health is still pretty chunky and so I think this is like a pretty well statted unit for what it's doing and at its current influence costs it's very very good like stat for value in that setup because basically it's just not very hard to play into colors and it's pretty easy to just slot into a number of different decks that play attachments. Um, the ability can be used either as a cheap ramp effect with very, very small units uh, or small weapons, which uh, we have built a deck around. We'll be showing that off a little bit. Uh, and also, it can be used to double up on attachments such as like Steel Fang Chakrams, uh, anything like in a sort of like larger format like amber locks or emerald overchargers or like all of the sort of setups where you can basically like create and sacrifice relics will have significantly better options one of the things that we've noticed about Enoa is that if you're playing a Rakano deck you can run Okasa's audience the one cost card that plunders and pay two to sacrifice and play a Sentinel, and when you have a Kessa's audience and you draw one with an Anoa Elevator Overseer, then you get to play the card, immediately break it, and then immediately play the Sentinel off of it, uh, which really improves the value of that card in the late game. So kind of a cool little thing where basically a small card that helps you get to Anoa also like plays really well off of Anoa, which is very, very fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, in Expedition, this card I think has like a decent amount of uses. It is clearly a pretty big upside to having Anoa Elevator Overseer out. Uh, that much power leads to a lot of tempo. So if you're playing a, an attachment heavy deck, whether it be weapons or relics or curses, uh, you can use curses, then uh, all of those things will allow you to basically just get another like extra card played per turn in red green. And if you're playing in a deck that plays fairly mid range, this is something that really supports that sort of setup because you get to play more than one card per turn. And that is usually the best way to win in like the mid range tempo decks is to play more than one big threat per turn turn or play very very big threats per turn uh, so there are some obvious things that you can do that are pretty crazy like uh, you know elevator overseer can be played and then immediately set up with something like a phoenix stone into a draco shaman circlet on turn five so any type of like eight drop that you want to play you can play off of other one drops uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this in the deck that we're showing off um, but basically you get like that cool cool ramp setup that's a little bit harder to use and you have to build very specifically around it but i think it's a pretty decent option uh, so yeah, the card seems to be decently synergized for mid-range and for more like control-based strategies. Now as to weaknesses, this is clearly a pretty vulnerable card. It is something that you can kill pretty quickly. It is slow in Rikano, so it is something that like takes a little time to set up and also like kind of demands that you have a decent amount of attachments in your deck, which means that you're sacrificing some mid-range unit bases in order to get this sort of power ramp. Uh, if you don't have anything to spend the power on, so if you are, for example, playing like an Amplify card and then you just don't have a second card to play, uh, then you don't get good benefits from it. Basically, this card is just like kind of average in those cases. 
but most of the time I think you can get benefits from the upside just by playing a relatively attachment heavy deck with a decent amount of different options. Uh, it, if you want to build around the like ramp to eight part of it, then that's going to be a very, very difficult deck to construct. But if you want to build just a mid range beaters with stuff like, say, Vadius or uh, any sort of like setup where you basically just play big, chunky uh, units or amplify attachments like gravity glove or like anything along those lines where you just have like a couple of decent cards in the setup this is something that will actually get you like a lot of value in terms of just playing mid-range threat after mid-range threat after mid-range threat and i think that's where it belongs in expedition tech decks in throne tech decks um there's a lot of things to do at four in throne and a lot of them are like uh, a little bit more What's the word? They're, they do a little bit more on summon. Uh, Inoa is a card that takes one turn to set up, and like in Throne, that is a little bit more something that you're not really happy to do on four drops. Basically, like once you start getting into the deeper uh, powers, uh, you really start to want to have a lot more onboard effects. Uh, something that your opponent has to kill is nice, but Inoa is not necessarily providing a like kill this or lose the game th threat. It is just providing something that will eventually transition into other threats. So while it is a good tempo mid-range card in, card in Throne, I think it's a little bit weaker in that format. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the deck that we built around it today. Uh, this is our Elevator Operator deck, uh, and the basic idea behind it is that we are actually using the ramp aspect of it. Uh, we play Linux Molten Wing, Vadius Proud Duelist, Inoa, Elevator Overseer, and along with Relia and Savior of the Meek for reasons that we'll talk about a little bit. And the basic idea is to play Enoa, Elevator Operator, or Elevator Overseer, then set up a one-cost card like Elder's Feather, Gravity Glove, Jetpack, Cass's Audience, or Phoenix Stone to transition into a big eight drop such as Lieutenant Relia or Draco Shaman Circlet. Uh, on top of that, we protect Inoa Elevator Overseer with Bubble Shield to make sure that we actually hit that on occasion. And if that is going to get removed, we have a couple of other ways to win that are in the deck. First off, we have the Linux Molten Wing setup. So since we have Amplify, Relic Weapons, and a couple of other choices to potentially hit off of, uh, such as Draco Shaman Circlet and the Elder's Feathers and Phoenix Stones, Linux provides a decent threat and also a good distraction from Inoa as a three cost card card that demands removal. Vadius Proud Duelist plays with Linax and plays with Enoa. It plays a weapon, which means that it will play your first four power per turn and give you a little bit of a bonus. You can follow up on Vadius with something else. Um, and then also that will deal four damage with Linax Molten Wing, which is going to be a pretty nice bonus as well. In addition, it gives you Steel Fang Chakrams, which Steel Fang Chakrams are just really powerful in this format. With Enoa, you can play a Steel Fang Chakram and get the full power refund off of it, and then like like basically just continue to sort of set up whatever board you're trying to set up while still getting like a little bit of extra value out of Vadius's ability. In addition, this deck uses jetpacks as one cost cards, so Vadius Proud Duelist tends to be a pretty good aggressive option to win the game if you are looking for some other choices to bubble shield or to protect. So very, very fun stuff on that front. And finally, the Seal Fang Chakrams are good on Relia and Sapir the Meek. Not that either of those cards get played as much, but both are good ramp options for the deck, so it's kind of a fun little thing that we are we, we can play around with. Um, apart from that, the deck uses just like basically lots and lots of good one costs that are also more flexible. We have a Blazing Salvo market to make sure that we have decent answers, better ways to ramp, uh, some possible ways to draw extra Justice Siddles if we need to, just to get into like the mid range, and like Reactor Forge for getting into the late game if we have a handful of Lieutenant Relias, that kind of thing. Um, combined with the plunder off of a Kessa's audience and Lieutenant Relias' ability to draw Justice Sigils, this deck has a pretty good power curve to actually hit the four drop consistently consistently and then potentially play a fifth power afterwards to trigger all of the interesting eight and nine drop ideas that we're trying to hit. So some pretty fun stuff there. And then of course we also even use like stuff that plays uh, curses such as martial efficiency. Uh, just there's a general weapons theme going on. So it's a good example of the types of decks that you can build with this type of uh, card. Uh, this is the more like Johnny like combo type setup, but if you wanted to build a more like mid-range aggressive option with Vadius, Linex, and Inoa, there's some pretty good options there. You just want to play like a decent amount of like aggressive units, some good combat tricks, and then you don't go nearly as hard on like the ones, but you instead like put in a lot of like good four-cost relics and 
weapons that attach to these units and make them stickier and scarier. So lots and lots of fun possibilities there. We'll probably be showing off some games from this uh, in the near future, uh, but I wanted to uh, basically do a little brew as well as a discussion of the cards since uh, we haven't... Uh, haven't done a brew in a little bit. Uh, I realized recently that we had a centimeters brew that apparently hasn't shown up on YouTube. I thought I uploaded it, but I think I only got to like the editing stage. So we might have to do a couple more brews in the upcoming week. So stay tuned for that and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, I am as always Loco Pojo. I am on YouTube, Twitch, Patreon, and Twitter, and uh, I will see you all next time with more eternal stuff. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely evening. Cheers.